Thanks for watching County Report This Week. I'm Susan Kennedy. A landmark decision that creates a two-tier disability retirement system for all Montgomery County employees has officially gone into effect. This new system comes almost five years after the county initially started pursuing reforms. A 2008 report by the county's inspector general found that between 2004 and 2008, 62 percent of retiring police officers in the county were awarded disability retirement. The new system will allow for a panel reviewing claims to differentiate between a partial and severe disability. It's estimated this legislation will save taxpayers close to three million dollars annually. So as of July 1st, 2012, any injury that occurs that's the subject of disability claim July 1st or after will be under this new two-tier system which will apply to all county employees not just fire and rescue employees who have been in a two-tier system for about a decade. Because most of the claims in the experience of the system uh, for the fire and rescue service for example have been partial disability claims so assuming that holds true for the police uh, claims and for uh, county government employees generally, then that should be the annual savings in, in the two, two and a half to three million dollar range. And so that, that's good money, and to, you know, that's, that's, that's real savings. However, the, the reason to do this was not to save money. The reason to do this was to make sure that we have a functioning and fair disability retirement system that has the confidence of the public because it's set up right and works right and is fair to employees. The severe storm that blew through our area June 29th left a path of devastation and destruction, most of it caused by falling trees. In the immediate aftermath of the storm, more than 70 roads were completely closed and 200 others partially closed by fallen trees. More than half of the traffic signals were also knocked out. Montgomery County had all boots on the ground in this massive cleanup effort. All around Montgomery County, you could see and hear the remnants of the storm that took residents completely by surprise. Well, I wasn't here when it happened, and I think that was a lucky thing. Um, so my neighbors called me right after it happened. One of the limbs went right through the roof into the bedroom, and again, it was like, 10 feet away from where I would have been in the bed. County police called in extra officers to direct traffic, but there were some folks who took advantage of economic opportunities as a result of power outages. Randy Sparks came up from Mississippi just to sell generators. They're just, they're just fed up with it. They're, they're ready to get something done and and, and you can't, can't blame them. I mean, they're just, people are just ready to, to get their power back and it's not, not anybody's fault, it just, it's just part of nature. But even through the devastation, folks were able to maintain their sense of humor. I realize being upset doesn't accomplish anything, so I just sort of have to do the next thing. And uh, right now I think it's a great birdhouse. <laughs> The county's Office of Consumer Protection is telling residents to be cautious when hiring contractors to repair damage caused by the recent storm. Eric Friedman is the director of that office and he is here with some advice for consumers before signing any work contracts. Eric, thanks for being with us here today. Unfortunately, this is a time when these folks do come out of the woodwork and they prey on individuals. What's the first thing that folks need to remember? Well, Susan, you're absolutely correct. Don't panic. And don't hire the first guy that knocks on your door is probably the best advice. Our investigators have been going door to door, working with consumers and alerting them not to worry and hire the first person because they're going to get bombarded with unlicensed contractors from out of state who follow the path of the storm damage to try and exploit their misfortune and get money from them. And we're actually coordinating this with our fire rescue service. They've identified those streets that have had the worst damage. And our investigators have been going, as I say, door to door, trying to alert consumers to, to the information that they need to know. Now, there's also some information about um, taking money from folks. There is a law in place that says that folks should not give up too much of a deposit before they sign a work contract. Tell us about that. Yes, home improvement contractors must be licensed in the state of Maryland by the Home Improvement Commission. 
and the state law prohibits them accepting more than a third of the money up front. So consumers really should negotiate with contractors to make sure that they're not paying until the job is done. Check to make sure that they are in fact licensed. They can contact our office to see if we have complaints against them. They can go online and check to see if there are any complaints that the Home Improvement Commission has. Make sure they get written estimates and make sure that those estimates specify exactly what materials are going to be used, how much time it's going to take to fix a, a job. Uh, those are the things that consumers really have to do in terms of doing homework before they hire anybody. What about tree removal? I'm sure there are a lot of contractors out there right now who are trying to uh, get that kind of business as well. Absolutely. That's going to be a big problem. Now, tree cutters need to be licensed by the state as well. Consumers can contact the state agency through our webpage to find out if, in fact, the tree cutter is, is licensed. We've gone door to door and seen trees that have gone completely through a house's roof and caused a tremendous amount of damage. Some of these trees are, are very large in size. So it is going to be a problem. It's going to take time to uh, remedy all the situations. But again, you don't want to be victimized twice by having first storm damage and then being uh, subject to financial damage by an unlicensed contractor. And once again, Eric, what should folks do if they believe they've been a victim of one of these scams? Well, Susan, we would encourage residents in Montgomery County to contact our office either by phone at 240-777-3636, or they can contact us 24-7 by contacting us at email, which is consumerprotection at montgomerycountymd.gov. And we will have investigators who hopefully can help all the consumers. Okay, that's some great advice. Thanks so much for being here today. Eric Friedman, Office of Consumer Protection. County Executive Ike Leggett has announced the expansion of the recycling program in the county. Residents are encouraged to drop more items in the recycling bin. Lorna Virgili has the story. Lorna? That's right, Susan. The county has expanded its recycling efforts. That means that lightweight plastic can now end up here in the recycling facility. These kinds of thermoform plastic containers are now recyclable. The county has expanded its program and taken a step toward its new recycling goal. We will um, be doing things here that will continue to lead the region and the country and really the world in, in our recycling efforts. It's something that Montgomery County should be very proud of. Part of adding the PET number one plastic is to start meeting the objective of the new recycling goal for 2020, where 70% of materials should be recycled. We need the help and the support of our residents. Uh, it will not happen overnight. And so we are engaging on a very strong educational campaign to inform people to not to place these items into the regular trash, but to place them into the recycle bin. So we need your help to do so. PET number one is the transparent, lightweight plastic that is used to pack many products, such as fruits, vegetables, cakes, prepared foods, and other items. It is also used in cups. Pet containers are identified by the number one code on the bottom. Put a smaller version of this card to remind people about the need for recycling. Residents will receive this card as a reminder of the new recyclable items. The county currently recycles 300 tons of paper products daily and 120 tons of commingled materials. For more information, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. For County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. Still to come on County Report This Week, some incoming high school freshmen get a sneak peek at their next four years in high school. Keep it here on County Report This Week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. In the aftermath of the recent storm, Montgomery County Police have had all boots on the ground in an effort to get things back to normal as soon as possible. Captain Paul Starks is here to tell us about how an event like this affects the department. Captain, tell us about what you all had to do after this storm happened. Well, we were fortunate that it occurred on a weekend. Uh, that being the case, we still called in many officers who normally don't work the road, detectives who normally work behind the desk, donned uniforms, and were manning intersections for the last few days. We also called people in early and held people beyond their normal shifts. 
So this was really, as I said, an all boots on the ground type of effort. Do you collaborate uh, or work in cooperation with other departments in the county during a situation like this? We sure did. We worked with the other law enforcement agencies in the county as well as the state police. We are also coordinating constantly with the Department of Transportation. And we do have some good stories that came out of this, don't we? There, there were some good Samaritans out there who were very conscientious of what the police were going through when they were out there on the beat. There sure were. Uh, we can't thank uh, the citizens enough for their patience and their caution when they were coming through the intersection. But also, some of these people were very generous dropping off food items and bottles of water to these officers who were at these intersections for hours at a time in the heat. Now, this was an unusual event. We've really never seen anything like this in Montgomery County before. Anything that we can take away from it to prepare if, if something like this could happen again as the summer goes on? We just always need to use a little bit of prudence and caution when uh, um, we're coming through these intersections with no lights. The lesson behind this is to treat every intersection that's dark as a four-way stop. Look, look again, and then proceed with caution. Okay, thanks very much. Very good work. Thank you very much, Captain Paul Starks, Montgomery County Police. Twinbrook Day in the park brought together residents, businesses, and members of the Rockville government in a celebration of the community. Our Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has the story. And what are you guys doing today? Having, Having fun, fun in Twinbrook. <laughs> it was a day all about celebrating community. Twinbrook Day in the park brought together residents, businesses, and members of the mayor and council. The event featured attractions for children, informational booths, live music, and a bike safety course sponsored by the Rockville Bike Advisory Committee. Uh, this event is important for the community because we try to highlight, number one, the beauty of the community, number two, the character, and number three, we just want to make sure that people in Rockville and in Twinbrook actually uh, get to know about the different services and all the different opportunities that the city offers for all residents, not just the residents of Twinbrook, but also the residents of Rockville in general. It's really important that we show the community how much we care about the community and keeping the community together and having that sense of neighborhood and sense of place in the community. And that's why JBG feels it's really important for us to be a part of these types of events. It's a way of getting to meet people, to see what people are up to. I've learned of a few nonprofits I had not heard of before just by walking around the tables. It's terribly important that we support our communities, our neighborhoods, our community centers that offer um, places for recreation and visiting and whatnot. It's education, so it's a good thing to be here. Our main point is to make sure that people understand that Rockville is here for the community and working with the community. For more information on events and activities happening at Twinbrook, visit their website at rockfeldgov slash Twinbrook. Just weeks ago, Springbrook High School said goodbye to the class of 2012. Not long after, the school welcomed the class of 2016. To help them get acclimated with life as a freshman, the newest Springbrook class arrived a couple of months ahead of schedule. MCPS has that story. In an effort to help prepare some of its incoming freshmen, Springboard High School in Silver Spring held its first freshman camp, aimed at getting kids acclimated to their new school environment. Students got a glimpse of their programs offered at the school and an opportunity to meet future classmates. This is a camp to try to help the kids get a little more comfortable uh, with the school, Springbrook, and with each other. That's really our main goal is to get them maybe to think about a thing or two, but also to have, a, have some fun while they're doing it. A total of 41 students participated in the free camp, which was made possible by teachers who volunteered their time during the week of June 25 through June 29. Students got to participate in exciting programs, including World Foods, Digital Art, and Justice, Law, and Society. The variety of programs generate a lot of enthusiasm from the students. It's really exciting because some of the classes seem like really, really fun. Another important goal was to get students thinking about their future and possible career paths. My goal is to let them love food, love cooking, and hopefully um, go into the hospitality profession or at least learn the basic life skills so they'll learn how to eat healthy. 
The thing I like most about this freshman orientation is that it gives me insight as to what high school is like, so I'm not completely confused. This gives the kids a great head start when school begins on August 27th. And please mark your calendars for Saturday, August 25th. That's when Montgomery County Public Schools holds its annual back to school fair at its central office located at 850 Hungerford Drive in Rockville. Montgomery Community Media hosted its 22nd annual nonprofit organization day on June 25th. Sonia Burke reports. I'm Sonia Burke outside the television studios of Montgomery Community Media, where dozens of local nonprofits gathered for NPO Day. Representatives from local nonprofits met at MCM Studios to learn more about the importance of sustainability from experts in the field. Yeah, it was great to be here to talk about sustainability with nonprofits and specifically the power of using pro bono consultants to expand what a nonprofit can do. Here's a time when the economy is so challenged and nonprofits and government, all everybody's trying to figure out how to how to leverage the resources that they have. Coming to events like this, be it through you know Montgomery Community Media or through any of these other organizations that we represented here is essential for us to be able to do our jobs better, both as staff and board. The audience was made up of a wide variety of Montgomery County nonprofits. Women's Council, you had Docs in Progress, you had the Hospice Healthcare, um, you had the Conservatory here, and you also had the Montgomery County Public Schools. In these tough economic times, nonprofits are often challenged with sustaining their work with fewer resources. So experts say being creative and connected pays off. It was great to see so many people interested and in asking questions and thinking about how a greater part of their operating budget could be provided by pro bono services and not just dollars. We might be in business by ourselves, but we're not in it for ourselves and we're not alone in doing this. To, to have that network of other nonprofit organizations to learn from, to share from, or share with uh, is essential. It is all about thinking innovatively, um, thinking creatively, but above all else, being bold in your service to the community. MCM plans to host another NPO Day later this year. Look for that information on our website at mymcmedia.org. Up next on County Report, a famous golfer and thousands of volunteers and fans brave the sweltering heat for the ATT National. We'll bring you some highlights. And Tom Pogue will be here with a transportation update. Keep it here on County Report this week. Welcome back to County Report. The search is on for a new planning director here in Montgomery County. Officials are looking to replace Roland Stanley, who resigned last month for a new position in Canada. The planning board is assembling a team of nationally known planning officials to help in the search. Planning board chair Francoise Carrier tells us they would like to have someone in place by early next year. So we are looking for somebody with some vision. It would also be um, very desirable to have someone who's going to be able to, um, to really get along with the various interest groups that we have in the county, the employees, the council, the executive branch, the public. You know, there are a lot, there's a lot of interaction. The planning director plays a very public role. So we hope to have someone who will be comfortable in all of those roles and, um, and really be able to project a, a knowledgeable, professional approach to things. County Executive Ike Leggett took a tour right before the storm of the Red Wiggler Farm in Clarksburg. Red Wiggler provides employment for adults with developmental disabilities through a unique horticulture program that uses organic agricultural practices. The bulk of the program focuses on building a vocational structure that identifies and builds on the capabilities of clients with developmental disabilities. They become growers and cultivate vegetables on seven acres and then sell or donate to a diverse population. 
For more information on the farm, visit redwiggler.org. Once again, Montgomery County was host to a renowned golf tournament recently as the AT&T National came to town. The tournament took place at Congressional Country Club in Bethesda, and there were plenty of folks on a tiger hunt at this first class event. It was a steamy day at the AT&T National. Hundreds of spectators came out in 100 degree heat to witness Woods win his 74th PGA victory. The tournament had been played at Congressional twice before. Folks there know what it takes to make this tournament a success. When they tee off, my job is to make sure that nobody within their line of sight is moving or making any noise. I can't do anything about the wrens in the tree back there. <laughs> Our main function is to maintain peace and order on the golf course. There's certain marquee golfers that we work in concert with the uh, PGA Tour security that we've identified as people that uh, due to the folks that, you know, want to follow these because they're high profile individuals that we provide escorts, you know, for them. And when you come out on the other side, huh? what's your job? I am your... here to provide information. So, so if people like me have a question about where to find souvenirs, they come to you? Yes, or any of the other volunteers wearing green shirts. I'm a walking scorer here, so I'll be uh, keeping track of fairways hit, bunkers, you know, fairways miss, greens hit, putts, and uh, keeping the scores, and the scores go directly to the uh, big screen here. I am the standard bear. I carry the sign, which has the player's scores and names uh, uh, up on all the Putting on a tournament like this is an enormous undertaking. It takes hundreds of staff and hundreds of volunteers. We found some who actually used a vacation day just to volunteer here today. So you're using a precious vacation time to be here. So far, is it worth it? I would say you can't spend any better time than this taking vacation. Did you really sneak out of work? Well, they don't know I'm here. They don't know you're here. So. Now they do. Now they <laughs> First on the tee, from Sea Island, Georgia. Please the tournament also Chris paid tribute to our men and women serving in the United States military. Each golfer was presented with an official challenge coin by a military starter. Uh, we're here happy to serve uh, back to the community and, and be appreciated this way. In this week's transportation update, Tom Pogue is here to tell us about one lucky high school student who was the winner of a contest that focused on improving pedestrian safety. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. To improve pedestrian safety in areas with the highest densities of collisions, MCDOT and a group of Blair High School students developed an education campaign for the Four Corners area of Silver Spring. Those under 20 years of age and those over 50 have been involved in the most collisions at Four Corners. Transportation Director Art Holmes and Montgomery Blair High School Principal Renee Johnson presented student Colin Morris with an iPad as the grand prize winner of a text message contest. Morris was chosen in a random drawing out of more than 1,300 student entries. In addition, 12 students received gift certificates to the Chipotle restaurant chain for correctly answering pedestrian safety related questions. Participating students received rubber wristbands featuring pedestrian safety messages. Another contest at the high school chose two winners whose eyes are featured on posters that urge pedestrians to establish eye contact with drivers and look both ways before crossing the street. For more information, visit our website at montgomerycountymd.gov walk. We're working to keep you moving safely. When we come back, some tips to keep your kids safe this summer season. And Kathy Stanhope will be here with our Pet of the Week when County Report This Week continues. MC student Leslie Flores has been awarded a Jack Kent Cook Foundation Transfer Scholarship that will provide up to $30,000 each year for tuition and expenses at the four-year school of her choice. She is one of 50 community college students selected nationwide for the prestigious honor. Two MC students, Mai Din and Stephanie Conchu, received full scholarships to the National Conference for College Women Student Leaders 
by the Gaithersburg chapter of the American Association of University Women. The students were selected because of their outstanding community leadership and academic achievements. MC's Rockville Campus Math Team has won the fourth annual math tournament at PG Community College. Competing against 11 other colleges, the MC students were the first team to correctly answer 10 challenging problems. Welcome back. Now that children are out of school and are ready for the outdoors, the Montgomery County Department of Permitting Services says it's also time to check playground equipment for any potential safety hazards. Iris Argetta has more on this story. Playgrounds are perfect for summer days, but faulty equipment can ruin the fun. That's why Montgomery County Building Inspector Greg Nichols shows how to look for safety hazards. You want to look at the general maintenance of the, of the structure itself, is it anchored correctly? The general wear and tear on, on the metal. The same thing, especially for, for uh, swing sets, this is an S hook. You just wanna make sure that they're, they're not separated, they're not coming undone. And then you're also looking for any uh, exposed bolts that aren't rounded off uh, that could possibly hang or get ensnared uh, in a piece of clothing when, when a child is climbing. Some 200,000 kids get treated every year as a result of playground-related injuries. Although most of those cases take place in public playgrounds, at least 70% of the injuries that result in death occur in residential playgrounds. And almost half of all injuries happen when a child falls into a hard surface. So a minimum depth of 12 inches of loose fill material like pea gravel, wood mulch, or recycled rubber is recommended for play areas. It's absolutely imperative that any play equipment, no matter what, is not installed onto concrete or to patios, uh, asphalt driveways and things like that. We're talking about uh, protecting the child's head when, when they fall. Um, so we're, we want to what we call attenuate the, the play surface. We want to make it softer than normal ground or, or compacted earth. Uh, grass is really doesn't cut it. It's also crucial to look for any head and neck entrapment hazards in railings. It's very important to understand that toddlers uh, up until a certain age, their heads are actually larger than their torso. So if they can squeeze through something feet first, they can wiggle through, but their head will not go. And so if it's taller than their actual body, then that's, that's a real problem. And slides require at least a six feet landing zone without any obstruction. Play it safe, install play equipment properly and inspect it on a regular basis to keep kids out of harm's way on summer days. Iris Argetta for County Report This Week. And now it's time for Kathy Stanhope with our Pet of the Week segment. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And we are here with Snowball. She is an American Eskimo. She's seven years old and she was given up by her former owners. She is a love of a dog. As you can see, she's a little thing. She loves to be with people. She walks beautifully on a leash. She has got a lot of life left in her and more importantly, a lot of love. She wants to go home with someone. She is not doing well in the cage here. She really needs to go home with someone and she's just so sweet. This dog loves nothing more than to roll over on her back so you can rub her belly. She just closes her eyes and she's in seventh heaven and she needs someone to do that. She needs you to come down and meet her so you can take her home and she can be your new best friend. As I said, she's seven. She really needs a home. So come on down to the Montgomery County Humane Society on Rothgeb Drive in Rockville or give us a call at 240-773-5967 and you can visit us on the web at mchumane.org. And remember now, it's getting hot. Do not drive with your dogs in the car and do not leave them in the car, really. Don't think you can leave the windows open a crack and they'll be fine. It is against the law to leave a dog in a locked car, even with the windows open. It's bad for the dog, it's dangerous for the dog, and you could risk getting a ticket. So leave the dogs home when it's really hot out. And then come on down and see Snowball. She wants to go home with you. Well, that wraps up this edition of County Report this week. Be sure to tune in again next week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. And if you are social networking, you can like us on Facebook. I'm Susan Kennedy. Have a great week.